Hi everyone, this is Frederick Vermling again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit how you can look at next generation, next, next generation sequencing data that you got out from your CRISPR screen. Um, I want to emphasize that this is not the way you should analyze this type of data. There's much better ways of doing it, but it could be a way, a quick way, just using Excel to have a look at it and get some feeling for, for, for the results. So let's get started. So, um, what we got here, oh, there's a lot of things here. <laughs> Let's open this big. Um, so what we got here is a um, next generation sequencing data file that we go back. So this is 17 samples uh, fat, containing FASTQ files of a MySeq run, um, taking plasmid and cells at different time points during the process of the screen, PCR amplifying the gRNA sequence, then send it for for using uh, Illumina indexes, sending it for MySeq run in different samples like this. So let's take this one. So it contains um, this is the forward and this is the reverse. We're doing two times seventy five base pairs at the moment. Probably going to change that, but anyway, um, these are fast Q files containing the data, and they are zipped, so the GZ. So as you know, you just need to unzip them. I usually say pack up here, and if you pack it up here, you get this unpacked as a um, file which is much bigger of course then what i've done here is to open with excel so you need to find excel probably um, if it doesn't want to open it and this is not optimal of course because this file is too big for excel so it's not going to be able to open more than or in this case i think it's half of it so we're losing a lot of information and excel is not as mentioned the best way to analyze this type of data. But anyway, this is just a way to get a feeling for the sequence. So if you then unzip your GZ file, you get your FASTQ, you open it with Excel, what you'll get is then something looking like this. So this is an enormous um, file then, uh, containing uh, a name, the actual read, and the quality of the read. Uh, so you can read up on how, how this is Put together if you're interested in more in it. Um, so what we want to do here is try to get out this sequence from this thing. So I'm going to start by moving this down here um, to get the top row empty so I can use it for sorting later. And that's because usually we would just be able to do insert but this file is completely full so it doesn't allow for it. And then I'm going to use this um, length uh, the command which returns the number of characters in this text string. So len in this here. So this is 69, and you'll see that the um, the actual sequence that we're interested in is 76. But actually, also the quality information is 76. So we couldn't use that to filter things out. Uh, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to paste it to the whole row. So then you'll see quality data 76, text 69, 76 is the, 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 the data set for the read sequence. So what I'm going to do now um, to get around this is to replace, here we know, GTTTT, GTTTT, that's the end of the guide name. I'm going to replace this, so five characters, with three characters. Replace all. And note here that I just labeled the first row here, which makes things faster. And then what you see is that it's going to go through the whole thing and changing GTTT until these three things. So we're gonna, it's going to show where the guide name ends, basically what we're interested in. Um, yeah, so it's going on here. It's a big, big file, so it takes takes a fairly long time. Um, which is, of course, what you would expect. Um, the guide RNA sequence starts with the, in our using our plasmid, which is or the one we're using, which is the Lenti Guide Puro. Start with C A C C G. So later I'm gonna change C A C C G also into the same thing. For some reason, if I try to do this now at this time point, it doesn't allow for it. Um, so we'll. We'll just have to see. So you see, it's 
climbing up there. So a very large, large file. Um, yeah, so, so in essence, what I'm trying to do here is to change the, the read sequence. So the length is going to be predictable. So we could just sort this out very briefly so that we get, get it out from, from the rest of the thing here. And as mentioned, we're not going to pay attention to the quality of the read, which in essence you should, because if the, the sequence is, is, is bad, then we shouldn't include it, right? So we want to use other softwares for our real analysis. Um, but in this case, as mentioned, we want to do a, um, um, yeah, just get a, get a feel for the data set. Yeah, this is pretty slow, as you see. Um, so what we're going to do then, so now we define the, the, the three prime border of the gather name. And then we're going to, that's going to be replaced five, nucleotides with three of these. So the, these will be now 73 page pair long. And that means, so we're done. So, um, so 252,937. Uh, it seems like we had here um, the sequences that fulfill this criteria. Um, so now you see our sequence has become 74. So I'm going to do set filter here. I'm going to say I only want to see the ones that have 74. And of course, we are making a lot of assumptions here. So once again, we might introduce bias here, but this is just to get a feel for the data set. And then I'm going to press Control A to, um, to, to get the full uh, data set. And then I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it as text or as values in here. Um, and then we're going to have just get rid of all the, the data we didn't want to have. Like that. Let's see if it wants to do it. Very exciting. <laughs> I can also show you maybe if it allows us that we have a reference library here. So these are trying a lot of different, in this screen we're trying a lot of different screens for, uh, it, sorry, a lot of different pattern names for HBRT, TK1 and TK2. And we also have intergenic controls and non-targeting controls. So it contains a total of 113 pattern names. Yeah, like this. Um, so it's done. Um, it could be worth looking at sequence in Excel, as you know, to once again. Um, let's see. To um, change to courier new, because then all the characters have the same length, so it's easy to look at them. And what you can start seeing here is that. Um, that they line up fairly, fairly nicely. Then what I want to do now is to once again change, but this time I want to do C A C C G, C A C C G, because you know that's how it starts all of these in our in, in, in the vector we're working with. And as this goes through them, you'll start seeing here now that there are some some reads now that are not behaving as you want. Most of them are going to show um, five prime adapter, and then um, our, our changed, uh, replaced uh, sequence here, and then the actual GNA. But there are some of them that behave differently, and this is errors that this approach is going to introduce by the fact that you'll find sequences in here that actually has CACCG or or GTTT that are used. So this is not once again, optimal for, for this analysis, but it's a way of, of looking at it at least. And then I'm going to go 
label the, this one again, go to data, text to columns, delimit it, next. Then I'm gonna say other here, and I'm gonna say I wanna want you to to convert this text into columns using uh, taking advantage of the fact that we have these these things here. So um, so what now happened is that we actually the the, the actual guide name was separated, and once again you see that there's some of these that we lose because of, of yeah, different things. Um, but we're actually able now to um, to get the whole um, to to only get out the um, guide name sequence, and we can once again sort these if we want. Put a filter here. Oh, sorry. Let's zoom it out a little. Is and then sort A to Z, and you'll see that there might be a little bit different in size. Um, that could be errors, but it could also be that we used actually patterns of different sizes here using some libraries that had a little bit shorter and a little bit longer. Um, okay. So now I'm going to go into, um, I'm going to copy our list of guide RNAs. I'm going to paste it in here. Um, and then I'm going to use, just to get a brief overview here, I'm going to use a um, command called count if. So I'm going to go for the range. So in this data set here, let's see, in this data set here, so I click the first row and I'm going to press shift and I'm going to press this one. So 25, 24, 30 is the last one. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to copy this thing. Let's do it again. Count it. This is the criteria. And this is the range. And the criteria is if we'll find count if, count this if this sequence is found in this range. Right? So 2,279 times. Um, so, what we want to do now is to just pull this down. The problem, of course, when you pull this down is the range is also going to change. So we don't want to do that. So we want to lock the range. And by pressing F4, we can do this, as you know. Um, and then when we do this, the range is going to stay the same. So we can go down, do it. Like that. Um, like that. It took a while for it to calculate, and the last one too. Um, we also knew that the last one row here was 25, 24, 30. So 25, 24, 30 starting from here. So actually, we know that the total amount of, of reads were 25, 24, 29 that we picked up from us. So total reads. And we can say the sum of these, the ones that are actually um, perfectly aligned then with what we're looking for is 187,000. So this is, of course, not all of them. So we're able to um, align, or maybe align is the wrong word to use doing like this, but we find perfect match 
of these in 74% of the time. And this is kind of what you would expect. You would never expect to have 100%, unfortunately. Um, this is maybe a little bit on the lower side, but anyway. And then what we could do is doing the same thing for, for all of these. So we could just um, identify, um, give them a percentage. And once again, we need to, if we want to drag it down, we want to press F4 here so that when we pull this down, the, this variable is changing, but not that one. Right? So like this. And maybe we can also add unknown here. Or un or not aligned. And once again, aligned is probably not the correct word here because this is not a proper alignment tool. But anyway, so the one we were not able to align would be these minus these, right? Um, and that would give us 25.5. So in a way, if we very briefly want to look at their presentation here, um, and then maybe um, maybe insert like a pie chart or something if you want, you can see these are the unaligned ones and these are the different ones. And then of course you can do similar things comparing different samples. Um, but once again, this is not at all the way you should analyze this type of data set, but it could be a fairly quick way to kind of just get a feel for your, for your data. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna remove that one. Uh, one thing I wanna show here is that there's one guide in towards the end here. Let's see if I find it uh, here with this zero align. And this is because if you look at this sequence, we actually have the CACCG within the guider name. And of course, we remove those by saying change, replace CACCG with uh, these um, lines that we used. So this is, of course, a complete bias in, in this type of approach. But anyway, this gives you a fairly, fairly easy way to look at your, 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 your sequencing result, your FASTQ file using Excel. It's going to be biased. It's not stopped in the way of doing it, but it gives an overview. So um, thank you very much for, for looking.